there are lots of reasons not to delegate. It's just easier to do it yourself. You can do it better. You can do it faster. Or the classic, it takes longer to explain it than to do it yourself. And ultimately, people assume that because you don't have authority, you shouldn't delegate. Not true. However, as some of you shared online, delegating and not doing it properly can cost you in the future, whether you have the authority or not. So this week, we share the top 10 tips for delegating without authority. Julie Perrine shared our first tip, and Julie comes from Indianapolis, Indiana, with which many agreed was the best tip. And not surprising at all that Julie shared it as she is the procedures pro, and that's her tip, procedures. Julie shared why they are so important when we delegate. When you don't have time or the capacity to do a task for someone, especially if you don't report to them anyway, you say, I'm not able to work on this due to my workload or other priorities at the moment, but I can share the step-by-step procedure so you can still get it done and submit it on time or whatever. Or for even people that you do report to, but you're tied up with other priorities, you can guide or coach or delegate when you have documented procedures with forms, templates, and checklists available to share or pass along. Things keep moving forward. So this is an easy way to delegate and not get stuck doing all things yourself. Thanks, Julie. Laura Dunn from Ottawa, Ontario, has learned to feel confident delegating tasks based on other people's skill set. If they are the most knowledgeable person in a certain area, then it makes sense for Laura to ask them to help her complete or assist with a task. At the very least, she would solicit their guidance and feedback. She shares that not doing so has caused her problems when she made the mistake of doing something all on her own because she didn't want to bother someone else. Can you relate? Yeah. And since they were the subject matter expert, they then felt left out and angry that they weren't consulted. So doing something yourself does not always yield the best results. Hard lesson to learn, Laura, and we can relate to it. So sometimes we need to delegate to ensure that we are actually not stepping on toes. Our third tip comes from Bridget Cochran from Fort McMurray, Alberta. And Bridget says that we need to highlight their contributions to the task and call on their expertise and ask for their input and help. Asking with care and sincerity goes a long way. They may not agree to what you're asking, but asking nicely matters. Gracie Guzman from Kansas City, Kansas brings us number four, and Gracie advises us to highlight the fact that you are working together as a team. So instead of pointing out that your workload is too high or you don't have the time or you aren't the expert, Gracie says to focus on the fact that the team needs their help much more than what the task is at hand. That way, they don't feel that they've been dumped on and they feel that they are supporting the team, which of course they are, and they feel good about helping. You might laugh at our fifth tip, but Lisa Olson Tilly from Naperville, Illinois has a simple solution. She says the answer is food every time, (laughs) whether it is a snack and a beverage or a meal, especially for those one-offs or those small multiple favors. Don't assume that bribery doesn't work because we know it does. So thanks for the giggle and the honesty, Lisa. Glennis Devine from Montreal, Quebec says word choice is extremely important when delegating without authority. Glennis recommends that we focus on the words commit and collaborate. Glenna says that she would say, I have a project that I'm leading that needs some of the skills and expertise that you have. Is this something you feel you can commit to as a collaborator? Those words have a huge impact on when we are delegating without authority. Number seven is from Alan Ross from Ottawa, Ontario. Alan shares that his go-to is to describe the whole process as a summary. You don't need to go into micro detail might be in danger of micromanaging the process, which isn't good, but instead give an end result go goal. Sorry. Be sure to answer questions and don't assume that they can't figure it out either. Melissa Esquibel from Chicago, Illinois, recommends we keep it short and sweet by saying, I need your help. These words alone can be powerful. Now, the trick to Melissa's tip is to stop talking once you've said that. If they can help, they're going to ask you for more information. Like, what do you need help with? What is it? If they can't, the ask stops immediately. 
I don't have time. This way, you know immediately if they can help you and you don't wonder what you did wrong. They just may not have had the time to be able to help you. So if they do say, what do you need help with? You've got this. Number nine is from Linda Luca from Akron, Ohio. And Lynn says she asks for volunteers when she needs help, when she doesn't have the authority to delegate. Now I'm gonna expand on Lynn's tip and give you an extra little bonus piece of that and say that your ask will be much more effective if it's done when people are gathered together in a group instead of an ask on email. On email, it's, it's easy to ignore a request for help. If the request for help is within a group, whether it's on Zoom or Teams or in a boardroom, people feel a little bit more pressured to volunteer. If many people volunteer, then I feel like I should volunteer because I'm clearly missing out on something. And if no one volunteers, I feel bad for you. And I'm likely to volunteer so that you don't feel bad or look bad. Group peer pressure works. And number 10 comes from me. My favorite quote, as you probably know, is from Maya Angelou. People will never forget how you made them feel. If you want to delegate to others, especially if you don't have authority, you must be relationship oriented. You need to be friendly. And when they ask you for help, you need to be able to help them out. This is called reciprocity. So when you give to others, they are much more inclined to give back when you need help. If you've always got an excuse when others need you, you can be sure that they will have excuses when you come asking for help as well. By making sure that you have healthy relationships, the above nine tips will be much easier to implement. People will never forget how you made them feel. Delegation may not be in your job description. However, we should all delegate at times and do it properly. I hope you enjoyed this week's tips and can implement them this week at work. Good luck.